Act 3, The Orient. The enemies are getting stronger now. If your gear or your build aren't up to par, then you will likely struggle getting through this act, and it will only get harder in Act 4. There are many good items to be found in Act 3, including nice armor sets like Pride of the Jade Palace or Imperial Rainman. There are also some really nice monster infrequents. So let's get right to farming. Ichthians will be the first monsters you meet when entering Act 3. They drop some really interesting items, and some of them aren't all that rare. The Ichthian Aegis has 100% bleeding damage. This is a nice fit for my rogue, and I found three of them. The Whomper is a high damage club, but even better is the Harpoon. The speed rating is average. Most spears are slow or even very slow, so it has a faster base speed than most spears. Just match it with a relic that best fits your build. Unfortunately, I typically find five Whompers for every one Harpoon, so it's not that easy to get. There's a really good spot to farm Ichthians just east of the Babylon Outskirts portal. These are part of the Seeds of Destruction quest, so they have a better chance to drop rare items, much like the Reptilians from Act 2. I found many green items and some monster and frequents here. There are some more quest-related Ichthians in Jingyang Woods, which are part of the Lesson in Despair quest. Next up are Ratmen. Unfortunately, there aren't too many areas to find them, and none close to portals. They have some unique monster infrequents. The hat grants the rogue skill Flash Powder, which is a great defensive ability. The rat's clap grants Thunderclap, which is an area effect lightning damage and stun. The track has plus one to Art of the Hunt and plus two to Trailblazing. Nice leggings for a hunter. The Quiver of Nim has 100% bleeding resistance. I didn't find any of these items on this playthrough, but I didn't spend much time farming them either. Temple of Marduk is about the best place to hunt Ratman. There just aren't any heavily populated areas. On a side note, Monster and Frequents are Act Specific. Ratmen from Act 1 will not drop these items. The same is true for Ichthians. Don't try to farm Gilded Dead in Act 3 for Revenant play. They only drop it in Act 2. The Chimera is the first boss of Act 3. He's found in the Temple of Marduk. I try to destroy the two nearest traps before I enter his room. You can even kill him with ranged attacks without ever entering the room. But if you have good fire resistance, then you probably won't have much trouble with it. His chest doesn't drop good items very often, so I don't usually farm him. Although I did get a blue helm this time. Neanderthals. There are lots of these throughout the Silk Road area. They have monster and frequence for melee and mage classes. All the armor has cold resistance. The shaman items all have minus 5% recharge on normal and 10% on legendary. The headdress has to be one of the coolest looking pieces of armor in the game. The cave that leads to Barmanu has a couple quest Neanderthals in it, so this would be one of the better places to look for these items. Barmanu, the Neanderthal Warlord. I haven't had any deaths yet, and I don't want him to give me my first one like he's done in the past. I fight him very cautiously with ranged attacks. He won't go in the cave, so if you need to get away, you're safe in there. He tries to stun you and then drop ice meteors on you. High stun resistance will allow you to recover quickly and avoid the meteors. I don't farm him. He's just not worth the trouble. The chances of getting good items out of his chest aren't that great. I was curious to see if it would be possible to survive the meteors with the right gear. So I loaded up an old character and rummaged through my stash. Much to my surprise, it is possible to survive the meteors. 
The video is up if you want to see how it was done. The Gargantuan Yeti is the next boss after Barmanu. He can be found in a cave west of the Eastern Silk Road portal. He has cold-based attacks and can hit hard, but his slow movement makes him a fairly easy fight. He can be farmed quickly, but his chest doesn't produce good items very frequently. I wouldn't spend too much time on him. Tigermen are found throughout the second half of Act 3. They're in danger of being hunted to extinction for their saber tooth, which is the best monster and frequent of Act 3. Some of the armor pieces are pretty nice too, but that sword is downright godly. It always has the three stats shown, dexterity, offensive ability, and attack speed. If you're lucky, you can also get additional stats. I found one once that had attack speed listed twice, a total of over 50% attack speed. It was a blur when you swing it. This is one of the most common monster in frequency. You shouldn't have that much trouble finding one. I was lucky and got one on my third run. In all, I found six on this playthrough. I usually farm Mongolian Plateau, which is the first area they're found in. There is also a cave nearby that has rat men in the lower levels, in case you want to farm them too. There's a tigerman camp in Jinghe Wetlands that is part of the Three Sisters quest. Some of the tigermen there are quest related and have better loot drop chances. I got a tiger claw from one of them. Aside from the sword, all the other monster and frequents are pretty rare. Shao, the colossal peng boss, is found on the Great Wall. He's fairly strong and can disrupt skills. High vitality resistance will make the fight easier. He is very close to a rebirth fountain, so farming runs can be done quickly. But his chest isn't very productive, much like most of the other Act 3 bosses. I made about 10 runs and didn't get any blue or green items. Yeren are beastmen that are only found in two places. A camp just before the Great Wall and Jinghe Wetlands near Chang'an. The three monster and frequent armor pieces all have strength and 20% less damage from beasts. In Epic that goes to 40% and 60% in Legendary. In certain situations these items could be invaluable such as fighting Cerberus, who is classified as a beast. Only the War Chiefs drop this armor, and you will usually only see two of them per run, so these items are frustrating to farm. It is possible that Barmanu also has a chance to drop these items, as he commonly wears Yaren armor. Dragonians first appear just after the Great Wall. They can do a lot of damage when the whole pack attacks you at once. They only have two monster in frequence. The Razorback Harness, which has strength, health, and health regeneration. The Headhunter's Axe is disappointing. Don't waste your time looking for it. Bandari, the Terracotta Sorcerer, is found in Chang'an. He has a stun attack and can also cast Eruption, which does high fire damage. You will also have to fight through his Terracotta Soldiers. He has two majestic chests, much like Nehebkau Scorpus King from Act 2, and the loot drops are just as bad. Probably the worst of Act 3. Bandari also has his own set of monster and frequents, only dropped by him. All four pieces have elemental resistance and energy regeneration. Yao Guai, the ancient demon bull, guards the entrance to the Jade Palace. He is the last boss before the Telkin. He does fire, physical, and bleeding damage. The bleeding damage is often overlooked and it can be lethal. It's possible to kill him safely from the bridge with ranged attacks. Unfortunately, he's another boss with disappointing loot drops. Tropical Arachnos are only found in a few places throughout Act 3. 
The Forest of the Ancients is where you will find the most, and it's not far from Chang'an. They drop a shield and three armor pieces, all of which have pierce resistance. Abyssal Liches, found in Wuso Caverns, drop the last of the Act 3 Monster and Frequence. Scepter of the Lich King is a cold damage staff with energy regeneration and minus 25% energy cost. The crown has elemental resistance and energy regeneration. The scepter and crown look like the same ones used by the Lich King's spirit pet. We've reached the Act 3 Telkine. His loot drop rate is far better than any of the bosses we covered earlier. This is why I don't spend a lot of time farming them. I use ranged hit and run tactics while dodging falling rocks. He can do a lot of damage, but if you keep moving, you can avoid most of it. I did 10 runs and got some arcane formulas, relic shards, two green items, and two blue, including a shrieking helm with life leech resistance, just in time for Typhon. Typhon. The final boss before starting Act 4. He has the best loot table and drop rate out of all the bosses up to this point. There is a considerable difficulty increase in Act 4, so this is the best place to get geared up to move forward into Hades. Typhon can be very hard to defeat. Some classes will have more problems with him than others. He has very strong attacks and a variety of damage types. He can also sprout spikes that reflect damage. I managed to get this far without any deaths, so I'm not about to run in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He won't leave the circle, so you can stay at the edge and use ranged attacks, but be aware he can still hit and kill you with some of his attacks. I'm level 38, which is probably 6 or 7 levels higher than I would have been at this point without making all those farming runs. That, combined with all the great gear I found, made things much easier. That's all for Act 3, time to move on to Hades.